Okay, God set his sights on Abraham, right? He set his sights. He was his man, right? Okay, so what does it feel like when the Lord's calling you? You know, you're obviously here tonight because the Lord has called you. And he's, and he's working in your life. Okay, remember from the beginning what it felt like when God was, was calling you. You were in Ur, so to speak. You were in sin. You were in the world. Okay, but now you are walking towards him. Okay, Abraham's journey is a lot like that. So what does it feel like when the Lord is calling you? You see what I'm saying? Can, can you deny him? I mean, can you just, you hear something? It's just like, I, I keep going back to this, but the matrix. Remember Neo in the matrix? He knew something was going on. He could see that there were questions that he had, and he could see some answers and some things that were outside of his normal realm. And he was being drawn to those answers. He couldn't deny the fact that, that, um, that there, were, there were questions that he, he couldn't find answers to. And that's kind of where we are today. You know, we've got this world that God is just shaking the very foundations. I mean, we were going, going along fine. Our finances were fine in this country and all that. And then all of a sudden, rock, 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 rock. If God would have let it continue the way it was going, then people would go to hell. So I'm actually very grateful that God has rock, 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 even though it makes us uncomfortable. It's a very good thing that he has shaken our foundations. He's made us realize we do need him because we were created to need him. So, so if God's calling you, could you have denied him? If you, if you knew that he was talking to you and you knew he was calling you, could you have just gone, well, you know, I hear what you're saying, but I, I want to stay blind. You see what I'm saying? I mean, what was Abraham feeling? What does he do to get your attention? You know, these are discussion questions. What does he do to get your attention? How does he get your attention when he wants to um, to talk to you, to call you? You know, we're physical beings, and we were supposed to come into this world totally in love with God. That's how he originally created us, was to be totally in love with God and come into the world like that, right, to serve him. But the fall changed all that. And now we're born alienated from God, and actually, the Bible calls us children of wrath. We don't come into the world totally in love with God anymore. You know, we, we have to be born again to be totally in love with God. We have a nature that resists God. So that's why we're called children of wrath. Until we come to know and accept his sacrifice, then we're just blind to him. So being a physical being, how do we know that God is wooing us? Because, see, he's a spirit being. Okay. How do we know that something's tugging on our heart? How did Abraham know for a fact that God was calling him to make a change? You see what I'm trying to say? I want you to think about these things as we're going through tonight's lesson. Um, what limits will he go to to get your attention? Um, what resources will he use? Did he give him a dream? Did he give him visions? Did he send him angels? What circumstances that he, did he use to, to go, wow, God's talking to me. How did Abraham know that God had called him to leave his home and his land? It, he heard a voice. He heard it in his spirit. He heard it in his audible ear. How did he know? If that's how he calls us, then how did he call Abraham? He was destined to be the father of many nations. I mean, here's this guy. He's in sin. I mean, he's in, a, he's in a land of sin. And he is called out. He is destined to be the father of all the Jews. Okay? So what did, what did he do to get Abraham's attention? The devil, he knew God's plan. What did he do to try to stop him? Can you imagine? You know, like maybe um, I'm just throwing things out there. You know, this is totally extra biblical. But like, for instance, you know, Abraham chose Sarai as a wife. But what if there was some kind of a prostitute or something that was trying to lure him and, you know, who knows? But I know the devil threw circumstances out there to try to stop him. And I'll show you one tonight. Um, this is the thing I started thinking about. See, I told you the Bible is types and shadows, okay? When, when Abraham left, 
you know, well, first of all, let me back up. God was, um, you know, like in a cloud in, in the Exodus, right? A pillar by day and a fire by night. A pillar cloud by day and fire by night. Okay. Um, was there like a cloud that was hanging out over earth? And there was lightning or something, you know? And Abraham knew God was talking to him from that cloud? You see what I'm saying? I mean, um, did, it, did it hang over Abraham's house? <laughs> Did he, did he constantly call to him with an audible voice, like I said? How did Abraham know that it was God talking with him? I'm just, I'm just trying to get y'all to think. What was really going on when God called Abraham? You see what I'm saying? You know, um, and, and the reason why is because, and I hope I don't get ahead of myself, but, oh, okay, here it is right here. Um, Okay, with 300 people, we established last week, there was 300 people, because the Bible even, even goes back and verifies that. With 300 people or more following uh, Abraham, what did that look like? To me, that looks like an exodus, right? Like Abraham's a Moses. Remember about such types and shadows and patterns of things that happen? There's a lot of exoduses in the Bible. So, you know, was it like an exodus, like hot and constantly on the go? Think about what the children of Israel were going through, and these people went through it too. Because I bet you don't know this, but from Ur to Haran, now I've seen different things, okay, but it was 300 to 1,200 miles. We don't know exactly because the, the, the exact city is, is destroyed. But it was up to 1,200 miles. I found places where it said it was 1,200 miles. Now, let me put that in perspective for you, okay? I was looking for something that would help us to understand what 300 miles is, okay? In a car, okay? From here to Jacksonville, Florida is 288 miles. That's not even 300. Does that help put that in perspective for you? We're talking about at the lowest end, 300 miles walking with 300 people behind you following you, follow your God. What did that look like? I mean, we just gloss over that and we go, we just take it for granted. He left Ur and went to the land. Whoopie do. But look at what that meant. I mean, we're talking about food and, and water and they had, they had animals with them. So they were going a slower pace than they, than they even could. So um, was there a, a time that they stopped believing in his God that he was following? You know? Y'all behave. They were dedicated. So, so Genesis 12, 4 through 6. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. Abram took Sarah, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered, and the persons, the servants that they had acquired in Haran. And they went forth to the land of Canaan. So we established that it was a long ways. And so I look at something that just really shocked me. They were in Haran for actually 25 years until his father died. Now, look at what it says. It says, Genesis 11:31. Look, If you got your Bible, look at it. It's, what does it say? Does this say Abraham took Terah? Genesis 11:31. What does it say? Terah took Abraham. That's Terah took right. Abraham or Abram. Yeah. Do you see that? Terah took Abram. Who talked to who? In her, in Ur, and told him to leave and go to Canaan. God talked to. He didn't talk to Terah. He talked to Abram, but yet Terah took Abram. Do you see that? He was supposed to leave his father's family. He was supposed to leave everything behind, and he was supposed to go, but Terah took Abram. So we see who was in charge. Is what I'm trying to show you. Um. So. So I was looking at something that just, it's just odd to me, okay? He was there for 25 years. How long was it when God told Abram he was going to have a son until he had a son? Literally. Do you remember? 25 years. 